So why is fulfilled prophecy so important? Often when people think about fulfilled prophecy, the name Nostradamus comes to mind due to a book that he wrote in 1555 where he recorded somewhere in the neighborhood of 940 prophecies. What's really interesting is his prophecies are so vaguely worded that even his most ardent supporters can only uh, really claim that about a handful of them have been fulfilled. But even if we gave them two handfuls, you're still looking at a 2% accuracy rate with his prophecies. Now, God's standard for prophetic accuracy is much different. Does the Bible say it's 50% accurate? No. Does, does it say that God's standard is 75% accuracy, 90% accuracy? Well, let's let the scripture answer that. We go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20, which reads this, But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. And so we see that God's standard is clearly 100% accuracy. We also see that God took it so serious that in Old Testament times, the penalty for giving a false prophecy was death. It wasn't just, oops, I messed up. There was actually a consequence to that. So why does God take false prophecies so seriously? Because false prophecy takes the focus off of true prophecy. False prophecy takes the focus off of the truth of God's word. God is not in the confusion business. He's into the business of clearly communicating. And that's why when Jesus Christ was born, that first Christmas day over 2,000 years ago, and over the course of the next 33 years of his human life, God fulfilled 300 prophecies to a T from the Old Testament, showing us that his ideal standard for prophecy is perfect accuracy. And that's designed to give us confidence, not only in his word, but also in his promises as it relates to salvation and many other things. Consider the following five very clear, not vaguely worded prophecies from the Old Testament that were fulfilled specifically in Jesus. Number one, he was born of a virgin. Number two, he was born in Bethlehem. Number three, he was not only a child born, but he was a son given. Number four, we, his death was predicted to the exact day uh, in a prophecy in Daniel 9. And then number five, he would still have to come while the temple remained standing. And so we can see the accuracy of prophecy is so key in the Christmas story.